The FATUS project explores aspects of human vocalization and voice synthesis largely ignored by 20th century technical research agendas which have been preoccupied with communication of semantic meaning, that is, speech as opposed to voice. Aphatic noise is a vocal sound which has no semantic content but carries effective meaning. The FATUS project aspires to create an Artodian theatre of laughing, moaning, weeping and sighing machines. <laughs> FATUS seeks to re-embody the voice, to address the embodied aspects of the voice by, for instance, emulating diaphragm movement. <laughs> Affect, one might argue, is bodily, and the convulsive vocalizations of laughing and crying, anger, pain and despair, are driven by the autonomic system. They are parts of the embodied unconscious, distant from semantic centers. The project involves the construction of several electromechanico-pneumatic machines, which emulate the behavior of lungs, larynx, and vocal cavity in the production of vocal sound. This project is an extended interdisciplinary project to build physically instantiated, physiologically inspired voice machines. This project is I refer to as the FATUS project, and the word FATUS is a, is a kind of back formation from the word fatic, and, and fatic, a fatic noise is a, is a non-linguistic vocal sound. Aesthetically, the project aims at a kind of Artodian theatre of machines, an assemblage of disquieting devices that laugh, cry, moan, rage and sigh. Um, in terms of intellectual and historical inquiry, the project is motivated by the observation that the vast majority of human voice research over the past uh, 100 years uh, has, been has been exclusively preoccupied with speech. Um, prior to the 20th century, voice research for the previous 200 years um, had focused on making machines which emulated aspects of physiology. Uh, the big names, Kratzenstein, von Kempelen, Darwin, Wheatstone, Faber, Paget, etc. Right, so it amused me to build physically instantiated machines which had no semantics, but just had affect. Right? That's the kind of big goal. And I came up with this project um, quite a while ago now. Um, maybe 2006 it really formed as being a project to pursue. And, and I should say that when I make a choice to pursue projects, it's because they, they resonate for me on a number of different levels. So, you know, historically, it's an interesting topic. Um, uh, it's perversely amusing, and I, I, I enjoy perverse humour, and and uh, and it's also very heterogeneous in the kinds of technologies that that are involved, and, and it crosses into multiple disciplines. So it's uh, it's quintessentially interdisciplinary, and I, I and I like that, and I, I also like the fact that the, the expression of that kind of multi-dimensional research process is, is physical artifacts rather than texts. During the residency at the Siegel Institute and the Alice Kaplan Institute at Northwestern University in fall 2010, research took three aspects. The building of a new lung bellows machine, the development of larynx devices based on musical reeds, and the production of hollow castings of idealized models of the human vocal tract shaping various vowels. I've been pursuing 
the building of reeds modelled on certain kinds of musical instrument reeds, but attempting to subtract the musical component from the reeds in order that they be useful as, as, um, as an artificial larynx. The first m reeds I started making were modelled on bagpipe reeds, uh, which are double reeds, and the reason I chose those to model is that they occur inside a cavity. They're, they're actuated inside a cavity and therefore don't need lip contact, um, which of course would be difficult to, to simulate or um, model. So that's a reed, uh, it's actually a Spanish bagpipe reed. I made some plastic reeds modeled loosely on the double reeds, um, the goal being to try and make them uh, work at lower pressure because it actually takes more than human lung pressure to blow the bagpipe reeds. The goal, the goal is also to make them pitch controllable. And so it's possible to, to get some pitch control with these. They're actually made of the simplest materials blister pack plastic um, or plastic bottle plastic that's seventh hour so I use a, a vernier caliper to measure the thickness of the materials I'm working with. The difficulty with double reeds is that it's going to be difficult to automate them so I started looking at single reed construction single reed has a hard base and a, a vibrating reed these ones I made out of plastic tube. As you can see, you get quite a range of pitch change. But this one only has a quarter inch bore, which was not allowing enough air to flow using the bellows. So I built a larger diameter plastic reed. <laughs> And that one had a, has a satisfactory amplitude at appropriate pressures. It also changes pitch rather nicely with changes in pressure. I've made some wooden model reeds to test other geometries for uh, for the reeds, this one's drilled out of a solid block of wood. Once again, it has a blister pack piece of plastic. <coughs> Sounds like a duck. I was making some box shaped reeds, <coughs> which are more like organ pipe reeds in a sense. And they have a, a useful range of tones. <coughs> then I thought that making multiple reeds might uh, give me a wider range of, of frequencies. So that's a two reeded box with two separate air channels. And then this one is a four reed unit, which strangely doesn't sound well has quite a nice kind of mixed set of mixed frequencies. This is a preliminary model of a machine actuatable vocal tract model. It's made of latex, different thicknesses of latex, with a kind of hard palate area um, reinforced with with plexiglass curves and then a softer latex kind of cheek area and a set of lips made of folded latex tube and it actually has a tongue in there which is independent and movable and the idea was that by mechanically actuating the tongue movement and the lip movement one could 
produce something vaguely like vocal sounds. So you can see that the lips work, but unfortunately the tongue, moving the tongue has no effect. Not much effect anyway. So that's an active research area. The vibration produced by the larynx is filtered by the vocal tract. Models were made of idealized vocal tract vowel volumes. These models are idealized because while the cross-sectional area is accurate, the cross-sectional shape is generalized to be a circle in all cases. While this is taken to be reasonable for human speech research, it may not be a reasonable assumption for research into timbre. Okay. I don't know if maybe we can build up this a little bit right here. Aaron has turned these wax cores now this is the generalized profile of, a, of an R vowel. So this is the shape of the, the generalized shape of the vocal cavity making the sound R. Um, or at least it's the same cross sections. So we're going to make a, a, a two-piece plaster mold of this in order to take a master. And we're going to take a two-piece pl plaster mold of this, which is the same form just wider and the idea is that once the two-piece plaster mold of this is made we'll set this wax core in the middle of the two-piece plaster mold pour in urethane melt out the core and that will leave us with a cast which has this profile on the inside and has a, approximately a quarter inch wall thickness all right, let's see if we can break into this um, ad hoc double mold. There's a clay core in the middle here, and the original wax core is in there. Check it out. But so far, so good. Now it's just a matter of getting the uh, wax out of there and the clay out of there. I'm trimming it off, so we'll see.
the holy grail, I suppose, in this in this process was the recognition that one, the one thing the larynx does do is it changes pitch, and the one thing that these reeds won't do without subtle lip control is change pitch. So we decided to pursue the project of building an automated pitch controllable reed, and that's the one thing that we kind of discovered here is that you change the length of the tongue and it'll change the pitch. So just so we decided to pursue that idea, and there's. There are two main ways we decided to uh, go, about, go about this. Either a flat reed and a curved lay, which you have to maintain as it goes down um, an angle so that it'll vibrate. So if you, if you change the, the length of the tongue, it'll get higher pitched and lower pitched. Oh. Yeah, this one right here, um, it's at an angle, but really it's, it's a, what it is, a, a flat lay with a curved reed. So then by moving down, you get a higher pitch or a lower pitch. So, we decided that the easiest way to try and go about this to be able to move, basically change the length of the tongue, was to actually tr try and pursue this, this idea of just moving a slider back and forth across the reed. And this actually has, both of these reeds have um, steel, spring steel tongues. So you have the... That we kind of worked this out as we all just, just kind of just started with a bunch of conceptual sketches here of like how we wanted this this thing to work and then drew them out to about the scale we wanted visually and then I've just been trying to convert our, our sketches into actual numbers. I machined this one just a few minutes ago. Okay. Yeah. Out of this, just a solid block. I just got a couple more pieces to machine and drill some holes and it should work. I'm a professional bagpipe player so I kind of jumped at the opportunity to work with him uh, in developing reeds and uh, sound making devices in general and just get more experience. The bellows machine is constructed largely of aluminum and stands over six feet or two meters high. A custom motor and clutch system opens or inflates the bellows. That one's perfect, huh? So this is the motor mount for um, the big bellows system. And, and so the structure is going to be across here at the top of the thing, which is about six feet high. And then this is an um, electromagnetic clutch mounted in a uh, phosphor bronze bush, which Kevin has just put together on a pillow block, which will be mounted in, inside this structure. And it'll be chain driven by this motor. And so I have to mount, mount the motor on this angle plate and calculate the height and the clearances so that uh, we can actually align the chain line this way and position the motor in this sense. It's got to clear this structure this way so the chain lines up across here. And I've also got to have some movement in the system so that it, uh, it will adjust for the slack in the chain. I think we're good. It's definitely better than a, a proof of concept. Now we don't have the closed loop controls of limit switches installed here, but it's basically the same logic of um, motor clutch and, and limit switches and uh, and I just have some buttons here to press to pretend to be the limit switches. Test a 
microphone to that. And it records the uh, laughter of people up on the Ooh. side of it Ooh. and mocks them. <laughs> people la like encourage laughter. I don't know. It's wow. And you could screen it in terms of, you know, we, we do know that there's some frequency of laughter, so, you know, the a amplitude. The amplitude bursts, yeah, amplitude within bursts. that frequency. Exactly, so if it doesn't fall within so some boundary. So it could actually boundary. pattern recognize. You can make it run autonomously yeah. at that point. Yeah, it's like, if this happens, then this not. If, but if not, then use whatever. We well, want. it can trigger, the, it, can, it can seed the situation. It can laugh, well, and if somebody else laughs, it can like. It could be like self-correcting. You know, yeah. and so Beautiful. like as more people Beautiful. around it laugh, it it well, it learns in sort of a short term goldfish way. Ooh. This machine really is like <laughs> just this is really nice because because you know it would it obviously will make sense to make these things interactive. If the thing is 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 doing some pattern analysis of of acoustics of the space, then it, yeah, it could be really interestingly reactive. I like that very much. It could be pretty awesome. Yeah. And it could be hilarious and make everyone laugh. It just it could be this self perpetuating cycle of yeah. laughter. And the other thing is, it could also record itself. Yeah. So that could, you know, you could start it off with a laugh, it would record its laugh, it might reprocess that laugh slightly, and then laugh again. You know, and laugh at itself and amuse itself. <laughs> it could just sit there and amuse itself. <laughs> 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 just like, yeah. Oh my God. That's a really nice idea.